right. Namo myo horenge kyo, namo myo horenge kyo, namo myo horenge kyo. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I hope this finds you in good health, yeah, and uh, secure. Oh, I needed that swig of coffee. A life without love, no matter how many other things we have, is an empty, meaningless one. Mm. Another Buscaglia quote. Yeah, love is one of those words that has so much charisma and many, many, many interpretations. Thusly confusing. Since I've been a Buddhist, love has changed in its meaning for me several times. But more and more, excuse me, the needle moves, if that's an apt analogy, <laughs> from, from the many colors and vicissitudes and attachments of samsaric impressions of what love is to uh, to something far more profound and i guess to me to now the process of enlightenment of awakening of truly and i don't claim to be all the way there please uh but this constant practice develops and opens a compassion in our minds that connects us so profoundly with one another that I have to believe that not only is that profound experience and that love is an experience, but that it very simply is that. It's, it's akin to the Dharma, not that it's an awakening, but it is part of the sensation of awakening. Do you understand? I don't know if I'm doing a good job of explaining that. Anyway, love has changed its meaning for me. Thereupon, the Bhagavat, wanting to elaborate on the meaning of this, further spoke in these verses. We just talk about Bhagavat. In the, in the video I just did on this volume two of the Buddhism reference and how this should just say either the Buddha or Shakyamuni or Shakyamuni Buddha because that's who's talking here. Uh, Bhagavat is a Hindu term, doesn't really belong in here. But anyway, let us move on. Those who seek the Buddha's wisdom will practice the five perfections. For 80 myriad, myriads of kodas, of nayutas, of kalpas. Long time. Throughout these kalpas, they will pay homage to the Buddhas, Pratyaka Buddhas, Sarvakas, and all the Bodhisattvas by offering rare delicacies, excellent garments, and bedding, or by building monasteries out of sandalwood, which are adorned with gardens. Through offering such a variety of precious things throughout all of these kalpas, they will transfer the merits to the Buddha path. Those who further maintain good conduct, which is pure and without corruption, will seek what the Buddhas have praised as the highest path. Now, keep in mind, that's all in reference to virtuous families, right? Virtuous, oh, good sons and daughters. It's, it's all about behavior, right? And commitment. Which ultimately gets us to what? Yes, see if it was attitude and intent. Those who further practice perseverance, attitude and intent, and abide in the stage of self-control, <laughs> that's a biggie, will be of constant mind. Mindfulness, yeah? 
even if subjected to ill treatment. They will continue to endure, even if they are scorned and persecuted by those who think, through their excessive pride, that they have attained the truth. You know what he's talking about there, right? Those who make diligent efforts and are firm in their intentions for immeasurable codice of kalpas, stay strong, will be intent and never lazy. And those who abide in tranquil places for immeasurable kalpas will always discipline their minds, avoiding sleep, while either sitting or wandering. For these reasons, they will abide in various meditations, their minds firm and unwavering, for 80 myriads of kodas of kalpas maintaining the merit of this concentration, they seek the highest path, saying, I will obtain omniscience. I'm not a fan of this word omniscience. I, I see what they're saying is the clarity of a Buddha mind. But omniscience has a, especially in the West, don't you think? It has this uh, implication of some kind of uh, authoritarian power. Uh, please remove that from your impression of this word as we encounter it in this translation, yeah? Then they will achieve this perfection of meditation, practicing thus for hundreds of thousands of myriads of kotas of kalpas. Their merits will be as mentioned above, if those sons and daughters of virtuous family, there it is, upon hearing me explain about my lifespan in this way, are able to awaken even a single thought of willing acceptance. Their merit exceeds that of the former. So get this transition, right? This transition that he's really trying to extinguish this old thinking of Buddhism or Buddhahood being bequeathed to you, right? They, everyone's, all this whole assembly, they still want permission. They want, please tell us we will achieve this. Why? You already have it. Just wake up. Just diligently make it happen. It's yours to do. I can't give it to you. But they're, they're, they're struggling with it, right? So this whole chapter and the chapter before it have been about get, accept this truth. It's your only chance, your only opportunity to manifest right now your enlightenment. This is the last hurdle, right? Of those who have no doubts whatsoever and believe deeply even for a single moment, those bodhisattvas who practice the path for a period of immeasurable kalpas and those who believe my explanation of my lifespan when they hear it are the ones who fully accept this sutra, saying, let us in the future devote a long life to saving sentient beings. Just as the present Buddha, king among the Shakyas, who roars the lion's roar on the entrance of enlightenment, is fearless in teaching the Dharma. Let us in the future be respected by all and teach of the lifespan while seated upon the terrace of enlightenment. This is the highest function of Bodhisattva, right? The Mahasattva Bodhisattva. follow. Those who have profound thoughts are pure, honest, and learned, have good recollection, and understand the Buddha's words in accordance with what is appropriate, will have no doubts regarding this. Furthermore, and this is now no longer the verse section, O Ajita, those who hear of the great length of the Buddha's lifespan and understand the intent of these words, will obtain limitless merit that will give rise to the highest wisdom of the Tathagata. 
You understand what that means? Those who hear of this great length of the lifespan understand the intent of these words. Not that me, Shakyamuni, has lived billions and billions of years, but this state of enlightenment, it's part and parcel of the, the karma of the cosmos, the engine of life. This is true for everything, all phenomena, right? And it's certainly true then for you and me and her and them. It's because we're all the same stuff. We all have this potential. Hmm? Myo. All we need to do is ho. Myo ho. Potential for Buddha-ness. Ho. Enlighten me. It, open this door. Let me now presently experience Buddha-ness. Experience Dharma, Buddha-ness condition. Hmm? And that's, you know, I have merit in the new book, by the way, because we keep running into it. And I thought, well, let's define that sucker. Eh? Merit being very hard to define. Merit being not a blue ribbon or how many gold stars you got for your attendance this month or whatever. That's, 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 um, ah, what do you call that? I was going to say reward, but that's not what I mean either. Um, not remuneration. Anyway, it's, it's validation. It's samseric. The merit we're talking about isn't samsaric here. The merit we're talking about is your accomplishment of purification, your, your development of your living in Buddhaness. Yeah? Developing your bodhisattva-ness. Right? Because we're verbs, not nouns. How much more merit will be gained by extensively, who extensively hear this sutra, move others to listen to it, preserve it, move others to preserve it, copy it, or more, or move others to copy it and pay homage to the sutra by offering flowers, incense, necklaces, flags, banners, canopies, lamps of scented oil, ghee, the merit of these people will be immeasurable and limitless. What is that about? Getting somebody so, uh, uh, not, not convinced, but assisting somebody in their Buddha path to the point that they really want to get into it and practice it so that we can go to their home, bring them a mandala, or that they can get one on their own, enshrine it in a good butsadan, create an altar, get them started with gongyo. That's what this is. If you can move them to do this, to take on this practice so that they alone can self-realize, because that's the only way you get to your buddhaness. Can't give it to you. All I can do is support you with all of the methodology so that you can have the greatest potential manifestation of Buddhahood in your sentient mind. This is a personal practice. So, you know, Shakyamuni is describing this very thing. The merit, the, 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 the surge of energy toward your own Buddhaness increases with this kind of Action, action, response, yeah? They will be able to achieve, there's the omniscience once again, or Buddhaness. Let's just say Buddhaness rather than omniscience. It's annoying. O oh, Ajita, those sons and daughters of a virtuous family who, hearing me teach the great length of the Buddha's lifespan, wholeheartedly accept it, will see the Buddha, who always dwells on Mount Grakuta, 
together with the great bodhisattva and shravakas, teaching the Dharma to the assembly. Moreover, they will see the land of this Saha world, which is made of lapis lazuli and level and even. The network of roads is laid out like a chessboard, paved with jampudnada, gold, and bordered with jeweled trees. All its foundations, towers, and balconies will be made of treasures, and the multitude of these bodhisattvas will be dwelling in them. Those who can see such things should know that to be able to do so is a sign of their full and willing acceptance. So, reading this, one might get the uh, impression, as I, as I just did, there's this constant reference to jeweled trees and, and um, all this stuff, right? Quote-unquote stuff. And it, it would seem as though, well, Buddhism is about getting all this fortune, not just mentally, but physically. You know, living a beautiful life. The land, the Buddha land is, it's flat, lapis lazuli, gold here, blah, 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 blah. Again, I remind you, he is speaking to Hindus who culturally for a thousand years or more have been inculcated into uh, first Vedic practices and then Brahmin and, uh, t practices all revolving around, well, their caste culture. That's important to remember because there's a hierarchy. It's very authoritarian hierarchy. You will be this. You will do that. So their own life is never in, under their own control. I mean, they can kill themselves. Oh boy, what a right that is. But if they want to aspire to something outside what they are determined to be, uh-uh, ain't going to happen. It's a serious problem, right? It still exists today. So their spiritual thinking, their, their, how would they liberate themselves from samsara when samsara has such a heavy foot on their lives? It's in their culture. It's in their thinking, right? So spiritually, if you will, everything is devised to mirror that condition. So before Shakyamuni came along, karma was something that was determined for you. Yeah. Brahmin priests would come to your home, gather the family. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. Your life's going to end like this. You're going to have a this or that, blah, 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 blah. And you better do it. Well, that's not the way we know karma in Buddhism, is it? Shakyamuni blew that apart. I mean, just consider the very basic idea that you and I influence and affect our own karma. Whoop. What are you, a commie? <laughs> you know, you're going to control your own life? <laughs> Doesn't work for us. Who are you <laughs> to control my life, right? Yeah, he was quite a revolutionary. So, don't make the mistake of thinking that uh, Buddhism is about fortune in the way of the almighty dollar or precious. What's precious in Buddhism is our life condition, our mental freedom. Freedom is in the mind. Hmm? It's not in possessions. Furthermore, after the Tathagata's Parinirvana, when he's extinct, those who hear this sutra do not disparage it and rejoice in their hearts should know that this is a sign of their full and willing acceptance. How much more do those who recite and preserve this sutra show a sign of full and willing acceptance? Such are the people who hold the Tathagata in respect. Dignity. 
Hmm? Self-dignity. Because if we hold our enlightenment up as our goal, moment to moment to moment, as we course through the physical world, then that is our highest fortune. That is our highest potential, instantiating, moment to moment. That is our dignity. O Ajitat, these sons and daughters of virtuous family do not have to build stupas and monasteries for me, make chambers for the monks, or pay homage to the Sangha with the four kinds of offerings. Why is this? Because these sons and daughters of a virtuous family recite and preserve this sutra, which means they have already built stupas, made chambers for the monks, and paid homage to the Sangha. And that just may, illustrates my point even further. Right? If you're not practicing with determination and confidence, then you may have to physically build and create opportunities for this practice to grow stronger in you. But if you're practicing at this level where you get it, where you are instantiating your Buddhaness every day with the confidence that you're developing more and more with the wisdom, hmm? with the experience, then you are performing those tasks in mind. Whatever merits, quote-unquote, you would gain from physically building, you are gained, gaining from your confident practice. It's the same thing, because all of it is about the mind. Does that make sense? Sometimes... Uh, when a person in different stages of your life, you were very involved with the physical world, right? And you came to Buddhism to learn how to liberate yourself from those attachments. Sometimes you had to do physical things in order to kind of break your mind of the attachment. But by being assiduous in your practice and strongly confident about it, you can break through those same things without the, the self-torture, if you will, <laughs> of uh, breaking those attachments. Does that make sense? Okay. They have already erected seven jeweled stupas for the Buddha's relics, which are tall and wide, gradually narrowing to a pinnacle that reaches to the Brahma world, another term that's in the new book. But basically, uh, Nichiren, again, I mean, constantly there's a refrain throughout the Lotus Sutra, like he's talking to Nichiren thousands of years later, <laughs> for crying out loud, Nietzsche, build a, a mandala that represents this stupa building, seven uh, jeweled treasure tower. Come on, do it. They're not ready here, but in your time they will be. It's really, it's really amazing. From our perspective, knowing Nietzsche and his teachings, going back through the Lotus Sutra is almost like his instruction manual, yeah? Hmm. They have hung various banners, canopies, and variegated jeweled bells, offered flowers, incense, necklaces, scented powders and ointment, burned incense, played drums, music, flutes, pipes, harps, and various dances, and adorned the stupas and relics of the Buddha by praising with verses and songs. Remember, chanting is singing. In beautiful voices, in this way, they have already paid homage for immeasurable thousands of myriads of codas of kalpas. O oh, Ajita, he's talking to Maitreya, right? After my Parinirvana, those who hear this sutra and who can preserve it, copy it, and move others to copy it, have already built chambers for monks as well as 32 red sandalwood 
uh, monasteries of the height of eight tala trees, wide and fine, housing hundreds of thousands of monks. The monasteries they have built have gardens, bonds, ba- uh, paths for wandering, meditation caves, garments, food and drink, bedding, medicine, and are replete with all other necessities. Such hundreds of thousands of myriads of codas of monks, chambers, and towers will be incalculable. With these, they pay homage to me and to the assembly of monks. And that's all about influence, isn't it? When you practice at this level, your influence penetrates so many others, many you'll never know in your lifetime. But it, it penetra- it's energy. It moves. It grows. And as you develop buddhaness, so too do you influence your environment. And that includes other sentient minds, of course. How far that influence goes? Incalculable. Building those uh, chambers for monks is building a mindset in others for their study and practice. Right? That's what he means. It says... If you do this, you don't need to build stuff. You're building it already through the sentient perception, the mind. And, you know, this part of the sutra is all about this transcendent power, quote unquote, of the mind. To experience in the mind these shifts of perception, right? I have explained that for this reason, after the Tathagata's Paranirvana, those who preserve and recite this sutra and explain it to others, who copy it or move others to copy it, there were no publishers back then. So copy, 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 right, is the distribution of this teaching of the Dharma. You couldn't go to Kinko's and print out a copy. You couldn't go to Amazon and order one. The only way this compendium of discourse, this this storytelling, this teaching could spread amongst others is to duplicate it. And the only way to duplicate it, one, to recite it, hmm? memorize and recite it. The other, write it down. But it was spread mostly by word of mouth. And how do you do that? Come over. I'll recite what I've learned. And then you can learn to recite it too. And we can recite it together. That's why that's the first recite, recite, recite. But you got to hold on to it. You got to remember it. So copy it. Copy it. Be assiduous about reciting and copying it word by word correctly. Hmm? Now, I know uh, the the archaeologists, paleontologists, all of the researchers will tell you, well, you know, we didn't find any written stuff until hundreds of years later. Fine. That's on you. But the people of the day were told to copy it. So I'm sure they found a way. They may not have lasted, Their whole civilization may be under a thousand feet of rock, but they found a way. This instruction was there. Hmm? And who pay homage to it no longer have to build stupas, monasteries, or erect chambers for the monks or revere the sangha. Whoa. How much less do those who preserve this sutra and practice the perfections of giving, dana, good conduct, sila, perseverance, uh, ksanti, effort, virya, meditation, dhyana, and wisdom, prajna, need to do so. All these are behaviors, mental attitudes, and intent. It's our greatest tool of enlightenment and our single greatest destroyer of enlightenment. How do you use your sentient mind? Samsarically 
or Buddha. It is immeasurable and limitless in the same way that space is immeasurable and limitless in the ten directions, east, west, south, north, the four intermediate directions, and the zenith and the nadir. And they will all thus quickly obtain Buddhahood. Those who recite and preserve this sutra, who explain it for others, who copy it or move others to copy it, build monuments and make chambers for monks, revere and praise the Sangha of Shravakas, and praise the merits of the Bodhisattvas in hundreds of thousands of myriads of kotas of ways, those who explain this Myoho Renge Kyo for the sake of others in accordance with its meaning through various illustrations, who preserve pure conduct and dwell together with gentle people, who are patient and have no anger, are firm in their intentions and always hold meditation in high regard, who attain profound samadhi and make vigorous efforts, persevere in all good practices, whose wisdom is keen and who answer difficult questions skillfully. O Ajita, those sons and daughters of a virtuous family who preserve and recite this sutra after my parinirvana will attain good qualities like those mentioned above. You should know that such people have already set out for the terrace of enlightenment, are near to highest complete enlightenment, and are seated under the Bodhi tree. Lots of symbolism here, but you get the message, right? O oh, Ajita, wherever these sons and daughters of a virtuous family sit, stand, or walk, there are monument there there a monument should be built, and all of the devas and humans should pay homage to these monuments as they would do so those of the Buddha. Thereupon, the Buddha, wanting to elaborate on the meaning of this, further spoke in these verses. And I'm going to leave that for the next video. I always find that the verses are more to the point and easier for me to understand than all the other elocution, but we'll see. Um, anyway, that's enough for today. Um, You guys are amazing. Your practice is amazing. So please keep it strong. If you can support this effort, this, this resource, not just these videos, um, but the, the podcast, all of that's free. There's lots of free info on threefoldlotus.com. If you can do a little more, you know, like and subscribe. That's a Bodhisattva Act. Helps us grow. Um, or, uh, you know, purchase an ebook. Or, or print book, certainly get a proper mandala. Um, or like uh, some of you have the good fortune to be able to become patrons through Patreon. Like I was saying earlier, uh, you may get uh, something in the emails for your uh, participation. But, um, or on Patreon. Um, it's invaluable. I, I There's not a great many of you and you're... Donations are exceedingly uh, beneficial for me to keep paying the bills and creating new books and so forth. So you guys, the entire Sangha owes you a, a debt of gratitude. Yeah? Bodhisattvas you are. Uh, more, the more of you can come on and do that, uh, I will start looking for other ways to uh, expand, you know, maybe... Maybe it's another um, another channel that focuses on a, a certain aspect of uh, Buddhist practice. Maybe, um, I don't know. I, I'm open to ideas. So let me know in the chat if you can support uh, to help make that happen. Thank you very much. In the meantime, the only thing you really need to focus on 
is the strength of your practice. Commit, commit, commit. Have confidence. Remove doubt. Namo Myoden Gekyo. Your practice means everything, right? Everything else comes afterward. So thank you. Thank you for that. And I'll see you in the next one. Namo Myoden Gekyo. Bye for now. Thank you.